After canceling an Alaska heli skiing trip last year when COVID came around, it's safe to say I've been looking forward to this trip for quite some time. This winter has been ever changing with low snowpack in January, extreme heavy conditions in February, and finally some certainty in March. In this episode, we head up to Little Cottonwood Canyon for an attempted heli skiing mission. Guys, welcome to Little Cottonwood Canyon. Welcome back to another episode of season two. Our plan was to go heli skiing this weekend. And unfortunately, due to weather, I don't think we're gonna be able to fly today. Super unfortunate, but it's just something we can't control. There's actually some very low hanging clouds, which is ultimately the worst case scenario for trying to fly a helicopter just because of the visibility. So I'm at the heliport right now. I'm at Powderbird, um, which is right next to Snowbird. So I don't think all is lost. I think we're gonna see if we can go um, snow cat skiing instead, but we're still trying to figure out what we're gonna be doing today. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem like flying is gonna be an option, but we do have two days. So I think tomorrow um, we might be able to fly. We can't even see Snowbird, which should be right there. So um, there's just no way we can be able to fly at all. But those would be the birds right there that we would uh, be going out on. Say what's up to the vlog, dude. What's up, man, other than another sick day at some face shots. That's right. We'll be swallowing it. I can't even wear my mask outside looking like a What up? Come that. What's up, dude? Lucas and What's up? Lucas. Yeah, Lucas. Um, What's your name? Uh, did you guys Jessica. do your Jessica and Lucas? We've had some quite a bit of new snow over the last few days. The area is west facing. So we, um, you know, it could be a mixture of snow quality, just like backcountry skiing generally. What I'm gonna do is talk about our safety gear that we're gonna issue to you guys. The first thing is this beacon. I'm gonna start with putting it on. The way to do this is to go over your left shoulder, through the head, left arm through, and then I'm gonna take it around my body like this. Off, on, pretty simple. The first number you see will be your battery life. This is once at 80. If you get one and it's at 60 or lower, let us know, we'll give you a different one. Um, if you do get caught in avalanche and you feel the snow moving around you, what do you think the first thing you want to do is? Keep it aside? Yeah, exactly. We're going to go through the airbag and you guys will have those, but the best way to not be in the avalanche is to not be in the avalanche. If you feel like you're uh, caught and you're moving with that snow and you've lost control, that's the time to pull your airbag. At that point too, you also want to swim, fight, do whatever you can to stay close to the surface. As it comes to a stop and you're moving with it, if you know which way the surface is, try to get something on the surface, like a hand or a foot. Right? It's much easier to come down and pull on that glove that's sticking out of the snow and have an arm be attached than it is to do a full beacon search. In conjunction with that, like if we are doing a search for an avalanche victim, everybody has these packs and they contain other rescue gear. If I found it, I may tell, I may turn to you and I may say, I'm going to do a beacon search. You guys put your probes and shovels together. The probe, pretty simple. You just throw it downhill and you pull on that handle until it locks. You'll go to that smallest number and you'll start probing at that number and then in concentric circles, six inches apart, pushing through that average degree, right? The idea here is that you're not just searching for the beacon, you're searching for a full-sized human. We just got the safety briefing done basically where they basically go through everything. They give you beacons, they tell you about your airbag, sort of like some very basic rescue sort of procedures, things like that, and just kind of um, kind of explain what we can expect from the day. I managed to score a little bigger pack so I can carry like my camera stuff as well. So I'm gonna try to be traveling much lighter than usual, but it still be enough, um, hopefully, 
to uh, show you guys some stuff. So this is the Avalanche Beacon, which um, basically, I'm sure most of you guys know, but basically just puts out a signal in case you are buried underneath the snow. The Avalanche Danger today, the rating is moderate, just because of the new snow we've had and just sort of the way the wind is loading the slopes. Better is at 68. So you can see when I pull this tab down, it's now on like receive mode, so it's looking for other signals, where when this tab is up, it's transmitting a signal constantly. So in case I do get buried underneath the snow, um, this will be sending out a signal to the other beacons in the area. So that's on, we'll leave that guy on. It seems like gonna drive us over to where the cat is just up the canyon. Um, it seems like we're kind of with another group. There's, I think there's like six or eight of us total. I loaded up my bag, have my other camera in here, but um, I don't wanna hold up the group too much. So I'm just gonna kind of rip the GoPro for a little bit, at least until we kind of get up there and, and see what's going on. So. Good to go? Yep, good to go. Cool. These steps are a little slick, guys. Make sure you gotta get hands. Oh, thank you, sir. You need it. All right, I'm gonna use it. Appreciate it. It's gonna be deep. It's gonna be deep, dude. We just got up here to the top of the cat. Um, it looks pretty deep up here. Probably at least, probably, I don't know, eight to 10 inches, maybe even more. So we're all just unloading the cat. I'm gonna throw this camera away now um, so we can we can get to it, but it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty sick. Visibility is super low, but stoke is high. Okay. This one, let's just kind of space it out. Next year. All right. Here we go. Hard to beat that. That's pretty damn good. <laughs> That's what happened. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, a big, it's a big hole. <laughs> it's a big hole. You get in there, you're like, yeah, no, no, I was, no, oh, that's a 15, 20 foot.
there should be plenty of room. Watch out for the gully features, right? We've all been caught in those a couple of times at this point. And uh, you know, just a nice 10 count, and we'll see you down there. All good? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sweet. That's where we're picking up. I didn't follow your tracks, so. <laughs> Take it on down to the cat, you guys. That was pretty fun. Yeah. yeah that great. was awesome. Sandy, huh? Woo-woo. Just smarter than the rest of us. You guys have got to figure it out. You've got to figure it out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. Thank you. Okay. Super fun day. Fun yeah, yeah. Sick. Did you get some good footage? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> put an edit together or something, send it to us. Cool, I will. Yeah. I'll yeah. That was a pretty insane experience, guys. The last time I had went cat skiing like that properly, other than the time we went to Powder Mountain, was probably... I would say about 10 years ago now, I went, um, I used to go a little bit more frequently to a, a operation out of Park City, but that was the first time, obviously I did it up in Little Cottonwood Canyon. We did six runs total, and basically every single run was just complete untracked snow. The runs were not very long, however, I literally think you would get down in about like, I don't know, between 30 seconds and a minute of like the main pitch and then it was kind of like another minute of kind of like working your way back down to where the cat's gonna pick you up so it really wasn't like super long runs I don't think the vlog necessarily showed too much um, in terms of like edited content of cat skiing I more or less figured to just kind of throw in some of the raw stuff and just show you guys what it was like from my point of view so we are hoping um, that the weather will look better tomorrow for heli skiing and if that's the case we will be um, all systems go up in the helicopter seeing some pretty incredible conditions. So fingers are super crossed because it does look promising in the like kind of afternoon, early morning. So maybe we'll get have a delayed start, but we are definitely trying to fly tomorrow. If we don't fly tomorrow, we will just go cat skiing again. So even a, the worst case scenario is pretty good. I want to give a huge, huge shout out to those people who have chosen to support the work even more through the Stoke Squad. Thank all of you guys so very much. So make sure you guys tune in in the next episode to see what we got around to. Take it easy, fam. I'm going to hit the hay. Uh, peace out. <laughs>